It's going to get loud and violent here for a little while. Don't call the cops. Hi, I'm Jesse Inman, and this is another installment of Stellar Rats and Stellar Rats. I'm Aaron Inman. Yeah, I have a long draw when I say my name. I do not know where that's coming from. <laughs> <laughs> so if you're curious about decanting wine, we got you covered on this episode. Why do you do it? When do you do it? Who invented it? Where do babies come from? What do the professionals do? Does it change your wine? Yeah. Decanting is really just taking a finished wine, a bottled wine, and transferring it vessel to vessel. Seems pretty simple. It is. At the end of the day, you could do it with a sheet. Do the French, when they... When they're racking, do they call it decanting? Or is it only when it's bottled? I don't believe they call it it's decanting. Just racking. I, I think it's just racking, yeah. Racking is when you unfinished wine, you're moving it from one vessel to another. Decanting is when you're moving wine from finished wine from one vessel to another. For example, this wine was in this well, this wine was in this bottle, now it's in this. Decanted. It's pretty complex stuff. Yeah, you decanted, decanted wine into a decanter. Decanting really has three purposes. The main purpose would be aerating the wine. A lot of times you do this on a young red wine that's maybe a little harsh from cannons. Um, it also helps blow off some of the reductive aromas that can develop in, yeah. a, in a low oxygen environment. Yeah, a lot of wines, when you first open them, they start off tight and then they end up um, open. So open is kind of when they're fully, the bouquet, the nose is at full capacity. You can aerate things too long and that's what your mom uh, may have had in the fridge and maybe you snuck in there and drank a few swigs now and again. And you were like, wine sucks! Yeah, that was my first exposure to <laughs> wine and it was like, oh. You've got removing sediment from older wine. Yeah. Usually older wines, say 10, 15, 20 years. Especially old. heavier wines. And we're talking mainly red wines with a lot of tannins that are built to age. Because the, the tannins are an antioxidant and they can, can help it have longevity in the bottle. Well, those start to bind up over time and fall out and become sediment. And so you want to remove that from your uh, your bottle because it actually just makes drinking the wine a little unpleasant because yeah, it's, it's kind of gritty. It's not the end of the world. It's just un unfortunate to have a bunch of crap at the bottom of your glass and you pour another one and you get more crap in there. On the older wines that you're removing the sediment from, you have to be really careful because the exposure to oxygen can rob those of their life within like 20 minutes. Yeah, I've had wines where you open them up and within... 20, 30 minutes, you're like, mm, it's dead. But it was really, they, they kind of do this, and then they do this. I mean, all wines do that in the bottle, out of the bottle, but older wines tend to do it faster. And that's one of the cool things about wine is they're kind of like a little time capsule in a lot of ways, whereas, you know, I don't feel the same way with other, like, alcohols, that wine kind of has this time capsule component. Uh, and the older the wine, the faster it fades once it's open. So you want to drink that thing pretty quick. Yeah. So outside of aerating the wine and removing the sediment, there's also wine preservation. Like in our wine hacks, our first wine hacks, which was amazing. Thank you for all the feedback subscribers. Thank you, mom. <laughs> uh, is when we use the small woozy bottle to pour uh, a single size, a single serving option into a small Basically bottle. Basically just removing the wine from oxygen by putting it into a tighter vessel. Yeah. Otherwise known as my bedroom. You don't decant white wines as much. You can, because the main reasons we were talking about decanting wine is to aerate it. A lot of times you're talking about harsher, younger red wines that are cellar worthy. So maybe three to 10 years is kind of the range from, from when they were bottled. Yeah. And you might want to open those up a little bit. You don't have the, the same tannin structures in white wines. I mean, you can do some skin fermented whites and things like that, but overall, generally, you don't, you don't you don't need to. And white wine, the other thing that you want to be careful with decanting them is because actually a lot of the fruit aromas, the volatiles, they blow off really quickly. Mm. And so, if you decant a white wine, you can kill the, uh, the fresh fruit aroma. Yeah. So today we've decided to show you three different methods. I guess three really different two. Wine, three different wines, two different methods. Same wine, this is a control. So this is just a bottle that's been popped with no decanting, no aeration. Um, this, this one here has been in the decanter here for about three hours, three or four hours. 
Um, so it should be really just about prime time when it comes to a young, is this cab? Yeah, cab. Okay. Where the third wine will be put into a uh, ninja, a, a blender, blender, and you know, get some air. And we'll see how it holds up. We chose to taste a 2018 Paso Robles cab from Dow Vineyards. And the main reason we chose it is because Cabernet is one of the heavier, more tannic wines. Big fruity bold. And it, this is a younger wine, so it definitely would benefit from some opening, some aging, some decanting. And the other reason we chose this particular wine is because it's it's thirty under thirty dollars. I think they they retail it for thirty dollars on their website, but we picked it up for like twenty six dollars. Yeah. Now these guys are a little bit fancier than we are. It's also two brothers that started a winery down in Paso in the late nineties. I like them already. Yeah, they have a little bit of cash. I don't like them. <laughs> so they uh, they make wines that are a little. This is their entry level. They make wines all the way up to seventy five, eighty, ninety dollars a bottle. We've never had their wines before. We've definitely heard of this brand before. Um, so that was also another reason we picked it, is like give it a little bit of a, yeah, try some a sample. All right, so as people do, we'll just pour this into our blender. Fill by the science guy. We're using a Ninja 6700. If you're looking for sponsorships. Is it really the 6700? No, I made that up. <laughs> so let's just put this on here for safety. All right, now this is my First time blending wine. So let's see. You just gotta follow your heart. So we're gonna go ahead and do this for what, 15 seconds? I'd say 30 seconds. 30 seconds. It's gonna get loud and violent here for a little while. Don't call the cops. That's probably good. It looks like a smoothie. That's, oh, probably, that's probably plenty. That is pretty airy. <laughs> <laughs> Again, these are same wine, so it's going to be pretty subtle, the differences between these, I would imagine. Maybe the Ninja one, because it did get beat up pretty good, but this is a one, two, and three, so we'll taste them in that order, and we'll... We're doing it blind, so we'll see. We get tasty here. So, wish I had a hat. Okay, one. Okay, uno. It smells good. Okay, it smells like cab. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Um, prickly. From having never tried this wine before, it's hard to say what's different about it. It's got like good kind of raspberry, a little bit of like kind of chocolatey notes. Hmm. This one has a lot more red fruit. And it's, um, comes off a little bit, it's still got lots of tannin, but it's more kind of uh, integrated and more soft. Kind of fits in the palate a little bit, not so chunky. Yeah, it's rounder and a little softer. This one smells like a ninja. Just kidding. Mm. Mm. And number three here has a little bit more of that kind of like olive. I, um, almost, I almost would say this is the control, this is the decanter, and this is the ninja because this one seems to come off softer. I actually think that the number two is the Ninja, just because of how open the fruit is. Um, and I think that number three here might actually be the control, just because it's got hmm. more of that earthy kind of olive. Yeah. Um, the fruit's more like currants, and it's <clears throat> a little more I think one reserved. control, final answer. And I think, uh, I think number one could mm. be the decant. Mm. God, this is hard work, but somebody's got to do it for the people. I'm going to say that I'm going to say that one is the control, two is the ninja, and three is the decan. I'm the same, but the last two are flipped. Just to just to clarify here, we got the answers from Simone. One was the decanter, mm -hmm. two was the control, and three was the ninja. So um, the only one that got, I, I picked Ninja, but just because it was softer. Um, I, Aaron made a good point off camera that um, maybe you don't need to decant this wine. It's pretty tutti fruity. A lot of wines don't need to be decanted. That's one thing that maybe we didn't say in the beginning. A lot of wines don't need to be decanted. And a lot of times you give up some of that fruit when you do decant. Sure. And so this one, number two, ended up being 
the the control, the non-decanted wine or non-blended wine, and I think it had the most. It was the most expressive and the most uh, fruit forward. Well, because here's the other thing too. Uh, pour the wine in your glass. Talk to somebody for about ten minutes, and you just decanted your wine. That's true. Yeah. So just don't drink so damn fast. So interesting. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. I, so for for me, decanting is mostly. I just don't like drinking wine with a bunch of sediment at the bottom. So if it's an old wine, we'll just throw it in a decanter. And it, it is kind of the experience. It looks. It's a show. It a looks lot of fun. Times. It feels fun. And a lot of a lot of of drinking wine can be that little like extra something with a meal, extra something with friends. It's not like you're necessarily always looking for maximum utility. Yeah. Um, hacks can help you out. Um, and, and there's probably certain wines that really decanting them is gonna greatly impact your experience of drinking them. Say an old wine with a lot of sediment where you don't want that gritty mouthfeel. But at the end of the day, there's a lot of wines that you do not need to decant. Um, just like less than 3% of all wines actually need to be cellar aged. They're yeah. ready to go right on release. Yeah, something about 98% of wines or 95% of wines are uh, drink within the first what, 24 or 48 hours and I think 65% of stats are made up on the fly. <laughs> yeah, and the reality is that's one of the misconceptions about wine is that all wines are meant to be aged mm -hmm. and they're really not. A lot of them are meant to be consumed you know, fairly, fairly readily. This is a 2018 cab, pretty damn approachable. Yeah, I think it's ready to go. Tasty, I think they did a good job for, we bought this for like $26, I think their website has it for 30. Super tasty effort. Yeah. I guess in some summization, some some similar similar do in conclusion, the wine's good. Decanting, if it if it suits your fancy, go for it. Not necessarily the most epic change in things we've ever seen. Yeah, it wasn't. I think we're just a little more. I'm I'm just mainly surprised that the most open and fruit forward wine here was the control. That's interesting to me. But um, none of these wines tasted bad. The decanted wine is also good. It just doesn't have as much of that fruit pop. Yeah. Now that we've done all the work for you. You're you'll, welcome. <laughs> if you'll give us a like and a subscribe. Um, I don't know why. I guess it maybe because you like it and you want to see some more. Uh, other than that, I wouldn't do it. Well, we're also very, very sensitive. So. Yeah. <laughs> I, I'm an egomaniac. I, I actually suck myself. I suck my thumb and cry myself to sleep on a nightly basis. There's no way we could be clean winemakers because of all the criticism we get. <laughs> yeah, for sure. <laughs> so thank you for joining us on the second edition of Wine Hacks, and we will catch you on the next episode. See you on the next episode. Bye-bye.